Today on Tocant, we are going hands-on with the new Breitling Premier Heritage Collection uh, that I was fortunate to see uh, at the boutique last week. Uh, I'll give you my first-hand reaction to the three models, uh, the good and the not-so-good. Hi everyone and welcome, I'm Ben. So first, let's go over a very quick history of a Breitling chronograph from the founding of the company up until now. So in 1884, Leon Breitling founded the company and uh, patented a timer slash tachymeter that could measure uh, the speed between 15 km to 150 km per hour. Uh, and in 1906, uh, released it into the Vitesse pocket watch. Vitesse in French is speed. Um, 1915, so his son, uh, Gaston Breitling, uh, was the first one who basically invented the uh, second pusher at 2 o'clock that was separate from the crown with the chronograph function. So you could stop and start and reset the chronograph. And uh, for the story, Henhart, one of my favorite German brands, um, is the, the, the brand that released the first German chronograph in 1939, the Caliber 40, uh, with that layout with the, the pusher at 2 o'clock that is very uh, famous for Henhart watches. Um, so 1939, uh, then uh, Leon Breitling's uh, grandson, uh, Willy, uh, was the one that uh, created the chronograph layout that we know today, the standard chronograph layout with two pushers. So, if, you know, first uh, stop and start and stop at 2 o'clock and then reset at 4 o'clock. So, you know, we tend to forget uh, that actually this is the layout, the chronograph layout that we're all familiar with. Breitling invented that. Uh, and then in the 40s, uh, Breitling released the first uh, Premier collection. Obviously at the time it wasn't called the Premier Heritage, it was just the Premier. Uh, and Willie uh, Breitling um, was a man of taste and actually according to the Breitling website it said uh, when a man puts on his wristwatch, uh, it is an unmistakable uh, sign of impeccable taste. So now, uh, you know, fast forward to 2021, Breitling just released the new Premier Heritage collection uh, with three models. Uh, the chronograph, the duograph, uh, the ratrapant, and then the datograph, the, the triple calendar chronograph moon phase. So first, uh, just a few words uh, before we get into more details uh, with each one of the three models. Uh, this is not meant to be a review, this is just a hands-on. Uh, I actually went to the Breitling boutique uh, last month asking to see them after uh, they were announced at Watching and Wonder, and uh, you can watch my initial reactions uh, up here, I think you'll have a card. Um, but at the time I was told that there were only some prototypes going around uh, w within the network of Breitling boutiques in Hong Kong and they did not have them. Uh, they didn't have the real ones, they were non-functioning prototypes. So I was told that they would give me a call uh, when they would have them and I could see them. So uh, I got a call last week and I decided to go during uh, my lunch time. So this was just a very quick hands-on. Uh, second, I'm not going to go over all the specs. I mean, you, you adults, you can go to the Breitling website and you can read all about all the specs uh, of each watches, but I'll, I'll give you just the main ones, the ones that I think are relevant. So the first one we're looking at is the standard two pusher chrono. Uh, this one comes in at uh, 8,400 US dollars. Uh, and that's the one that I was the most excited about uh, back when I did my vlog about watches and wonder because of the punchy, you know, pistachio dial. And I really wanted to see that. Um, so, uh, you know, it comes in at 40 millimeter and 13 thick, uh, which is the most vintage uh, proportion of uh, all three models. It is by no means a thin watch, uh, especially given that it's a hand wine caliber. It's still quite thick in my opinion, but it is the thinnest of all three. Uh, so the caliber, uh, it's the B09, which is the hand wine version of the B01 and uh, 70 hour power reserve. Um, it is quite well finished, but we couldn't tell because uh, they were not willing to remove the, the stickers in the back. So, but you know, take my word for it and you can look at the website. Um, the good thing for me is that, you know, it has no date. So, you know, they kept the vintage, um, uh, you know, inspiration from the chrono back then. Uh, I don't like date. If I can have my choice, I probably won't take a date unless it's, uh, it's a big date on the long day or, or, or panorama date on, on Glasshutter. Um, so that's the good. Now, um, the, the, you know, the not so good, or I don't know how I feel about this, is the color of the pistachio dial. Um, it is not as I expected. Um, it is not as um, strong or as punchy. Uh, it is more a subdued kind of green, and I don't know how to describe it, but I was really quite surprised. And the salesperson, actually there were two of them, told me this is the most common reaction of all the people who had seen the watch before me. Everybody says, oh, it doesn't look like the website. So uh, in the end, I think it's 
kind of looks modern. Um, so you have the vintage proportion with this modern dial. Um, I don't know if it's, a, it's good or bad or plus or minus, that depends on you. Uh, in the end, I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. It is not what I expected. Um, so my take on it and my advice is that if you're interested in that uh, watch, definitely you have to go see it. This is one of those watches that looks nothing like the press photos or like the website. You have to see it for yourself to decide. So the second one is the Geograph. This is a split second or rattrapant and comes in at 10,250 US dollars. Uh, so that one is a little bit bigger at 42 mil by 15.35 mil thick. And that is a chunky boy. I think this is very chunky. Uh, now it comes in with a blue dial, the steel version, which I think helps. Um, somehow I felt that the dial helped to make the watch look a bit smaller uh, unless you look at it from the side and then you can see that you know it's very thick. Uh, the movement is the B15 uh, which is uh, basically the hand wind version of the B03 and the B03 is basically a B01 with a module on top. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is still based on the B01, but because it has a module, uh, the, the, the split second module on top of it, that's why it's thick. Now the module is behind the dial. So when you look at the watch uh, from the back, basically the movement will look exactly the same as the previous one, the, the two pusher chronograph and finish the same, but it is a split second. Now the split second chronograph is one of the holy trinity of grand complications. Uh, you have the minute repeater, you have the split second chronograph, and then you have the perpetual calendar. Uh, so not many brands will, uh, you know, attempt to have a split second chronograph. I mean, of course, you can find a Patek Philippe, you can find a Lango Unzener. Not many brands will do it, and definitely when they do it, they will not do it at this price. So Breitling being able to release one at $10,250 is quite an achievement. Now, sure, they can do that because it's a module and then which explain, you know, the thickness, but it's still quite good. So my take on it is that, you know, uh, for $10,250, this is the highest end chronograph complication that you can get among all those three models and which explains why this model is the most popular uh, according to the cell associates. Um, Looking at the alternatives though, uh, you could actually look at Zenith and you know many years uh, prior, I think it was back maybe in the 90s or early 2000, uh, Zenith had a, a very good value split second chrono app as well with the L Primero Rattrapant. Uh, I love that watch, it's, it's slightly bigger, I think uh, on paper it's 44 or 4, even 45, but it doesn't wear that big. Um, you can find it still around 10,000 US dollars. Uh, so now, uh, you know, Zenith and, and the El Primero, the legendary El Primero um, being quite, uh, you know, a level up from Breitling. Uh, this is something that I think uh, you have to consider if you're looking at this watch. And finally, the third one is the one that you see everywhere in press releases and that all, all the media, uh, you know, is raving about is the Datora Triple Calendar Chronograph Moonface. That's a mouthful. And this one comes in at uh, 12,850, I think. Um, so this one is also 42 mil and it's also 15.35 uh, mil thick and I feel maybe just because of the salmon color of the dial this one feels just huge. This one feels somehow much bigger uh, than the Rattrapant uh, in blue. So this one is very reminiscent of course of the Patek Philippe 5270G, uh, of course that one being a perpetual calendar chronograph moon phase, a totally different price point, but it's true that when you put it on the wrist you can't help but thinking about that watch. Uh, the sales associate also told me that's the most common uh, reaction of uh, everyone who tried it, they feel like oh it kind of looked like the Patek, uh, but it's a Breitling. In terms of uh, caliber, this is the B25, which uh, Breitling calls a manufacturer movement on their website. And I think that's a bit of a stretch, if not a lie, uh, because this is not a manufacturer uh, movement. This is uh, actually a concepto movement uh, that is based on a Valjoux 7750 with a module on top. So for those of you who don't know, Concepto is a movement manufacturer that specializes in high-end versions of the 7750. So they replace it with a column wheel uh, and then, you know, they add module for different brands. So um, I, actually for the story, Concepto is also doing a movement for the Zin uh, 144 60th anniversary that just came out. Uh, and, uh, you know, which you can have at a much, much lower uh, price point, but that's a, it's a completely different watch. So. 
I think that uh, you know, calling it manufacture, um, it's, 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 it's a bit pushing it. The sales associate uh, himself told me, you know, this is not in-house. He made it clear this is not an in-house movement. So I appreciate that uh, Breitling is doing this. I think it's a good idea that uh, Breitling is getting back into more, you know, higher end complications with their chronographs. Uh, but what I feel is that if I'm going to buy a Breitling chronograph, I think I want to have a variation or, or version of the B01 because this is a very well uh, respected movement uh, from Breitling and uh, I, I feel like I would have to have one of those. But now if I'm getting this Datora, I'm getting actually uh, you know, an, an improved value concepto movement. Even though it's an exclusive movement to Breitling, it's not an in-house movement. Um, you can tell that also uh, by uh, winding the crown. When I, when I did that, uh, you know, when you're winding it, you can definitely tell that this is the 7750. It does not feel as smooth as the other two uh, when I was uh, winding them. So, uh, you know, in the end, uh, I think with this watch, you get the, basically the most complications is quantity over quality. Uh, with the fly back, with the Ratra Pound, sorry, uh, you, you got the, the best complication for the price. And here you get the most complications for, your, for the price. So that's up to you. Now for the alternative, for me, I will look at the Jager Le Coultre uh, JLC Master Control uh, Calendar Moon Phase. Um, this one goes for 14,500 US dollars, but you know, let's be honest, I think uh, if you go to an AD, uh, both on Breitling and JLC, you, you'll be able to get, um, you know, some kind of discount. So in the end, they might actually be a lot closer in price than you think. And uh, when you're looking at both options, uh, I know which one I would choose. I don't particularly like the dial of the JLC, the silvery dial is a little bit old man for me. I have to say that I like the dial of the Breitling, uh, but overall as a package, um, I think the Datora is, is really uh, not the one for me. Uh, I wouldn't say I was disappointed because I expected it to be my least favorite anyway, so uh, it met my low expectations in a way. But so in the end, one collection, three watches and three very different reactions. Uh, I was sure I was going to love the pistachio chronograph and in the end I'm not sure how I feel about it, maybe kind of a little bit disappointed. Uh, the Duograph Ratra Pound uh, didn't have any feeling either way and I was happily surprised about that one. And then third, the Datora, yeah I was kind of disappointed but you know I expected to be anyway. Um, so is Breitling an option for you? Have you seen them in person? Are you considering Breitling for this type of complications or at this price point? Uh, let me know what you think. As always, you know, give it a like if you like this type of content. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, don't forget to ask yourself what makes you tick. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.